In this video, I'll reveal three hacks that you can use to run faster instantly. And no, this is not clickbait. Because in each section, I'll show you real life proof. Yes, real life proof, the highest form of evidence. So here's the first hack. Now pretty much everyone's heard of this crazy ice bath trend that's been happening over the last couple of years. It's basically a cult at this point. And look, ice baths are really cool, but they're definitely not gonna make you any faster and definitely not instantly faster. So they're out. But there is one method of using ice to get instantly faster. And apparently it's better than steroids. And no, it's not that kind of ice. Gosh. When you are running, your body and working muscles start to heat up as they contract over and over. And this rise in temperature causes lots of enzymes to change as your body struggles to maintain its optimal temperature. And this results in an overall reduction in your muscles' ability to contract. Because if you didn't slow down, you would slowly cook your muscles medium rare. Not ideal when you're trying to run really fast. And this happened to me back in September when I tried to run a 12K race on a 30 degree day. I cooked myself way past medium rare because I was fine up until about the eight kilometer mark until I started to overheat. And as you can see by these Strava splits, it all fell apart from there. And I had to slow down considerably and maybe vomit a couple of times in my mouth to actually get myself over that finishing line. So the key to running faster is maintaining that optimal core body temperature so that you can continue to smash it. And we do that by cooling ourselves. Let me explain. Scientists at Stanford developed the glove, a way of cooling down your core temperature rapidly to allow athletes to continue running really fast without having this slow down effect from overheating. So here's how it works. Your face, feet, and hands have a really dense network of veins that dump a lot Lot of heat out of your body to maintain thermoregulation. So by maximizing the heat exchange by using this Palmer cooling method, you can cool your core, smash another 400 meter repeat and get instantly faster. Now we can't really run around with a big machine and glove like that. We would just be slower. So I came up with my own home DIY solution to get this same effect. And I tested it out last week for science. Hey guys, it's Pastor Connor here. I'm just hanging out with the llamas. Look, I've got injured, so unfortunately I can't do time trials to compare Palmer cooling versus non Palmer cooling whilst running. Sorry. But I'm gonna do it on the bike and I'm gonna smash up this local hill. Now last Tuesday, I ripped up this hill climb in 20 minutes and 30 seconds. And according to the locals, they reckon that that's an equivalent 5K time of around 12 minutes. Now the conditions are the same. I'm on the same bike. I've got the same legs. My fitness wouldn't have really improved in the last week because I've just been cycling. The only thing that I'm gonna to change today is holding that cold drink bottle during my warm up and during my rest period and then alternating the drink bottle in my hands all the way up the hill climb. So there's three potential things that could happen. Number one, I rip up this hill climb really quickly. Number two, I just keep dropping the drink bottle. And number three, I drop the drink bottle and fall off the bike. We'll see which one happens. Okay, this is starting to melt, let's go. I'm just gonna stash my bag under here. Can you guys look after this? I'll give you a carrot. Now, while I'm cranking up this hill, I'm gonna send you back to Connor in the future to talk about this next hack. Back to the studio. Now we'll check back on him soon, but have you ever been in a 5K race or longer and realize that your legs feel absolutely trashed and you look down at your watch and you realize you're running way slower than you're supposed to be. And then you look at your heart rate and it's sky high and it's only the first 400 meters. Or is that just me? I don't know. But what the hell is going on here? Well, perhaps you didn't prime yourself for maximal race performance. Scenario one, this athlete does a five minute jog and a couple of run throughs at a random pace before some static stretching and then gets on the start line and has issues like I described before, not ideal. Scenario number two, this athlete spends 15 or 20 minutes slowly increasing their running with included acceleration runs faster than goal race pace, right up to only a few minutes before the race start. Which one would run faster? You tell me. Now that first running hack was quite complex, but this second one is going all the way back to basics because sometimes you can get instantly faster by mastering the basics, like warming up. This study looked at race performance between different length warm-ups, and this is the protocol that they found to be the best. 10 minutes of running at 70% of VO2 max, which would be around tempo pace, before having a one minute break, then cranking out eight strides over a 10 minute block. Then having five minutes of rest before the race start. The theory behind this is that a longer, harder warm up reduces the initial oxygen debt that you experience at the start of a hard race, which essentially will use up your anaerobic capacity at the start of the race rather than at the end when you really need it. Basically you'll bonk at the end of the race during that final kick towards the finish line when you're trying to race your mate because he's been sat behind you the whole race. And what's interesting about this study is that the other protocol that they used with the shorter warm up that included no easy running at all, just eight strides 
was marginally worse than the other protocol I just talked about. Pretty interesting, right? But I wonder if Connor's finished his hill climb yet. Not looking good. So we need to prime our body aerobically, but also mechanically to get rid of the smash and UPB without causing too much fatigue in the warm up. And no, I'm not gonna do another time trial comparison because I'll probably just get even more injured than I already am. So we'll skip that. And unfortunately for us sub elite runners, we don't have the luxury of just being walked onto the front of the starting line before the race starts. So here's a more realistic pre-race routine for a sub elite runner like myself who wants to make sure that their legs are feeling good and they're not going into oxygen debt and needing an oxygen bank loan. So half an hour before the race, we're gonna start a 15 minute progressive run where we go from easy running to a hard tempo run. And then over the next five to 10 minutes, I try and get eight to 10 strides in, depending on how busy a race is. And then from there, I've got myself five to eight minutes to get myself where I need to be before the race and maybe do a couple of more little mini strides while I'm already in the pen ready to go. And what's really cool is in my half marathon race back in December, I actually could compact this right up to two minutes before the race actually started so that I was absolutely ready to go. Epic strategy to get PBs by the way, just do a local race. But let me know in the comments below if you think that this pre-race routine is whack. And if you have your own, that's even better. Let me know in the comments. And if you don't even warm up before your races, let me know too. Okay, it's probably about that time to see what Connor in the past is up to. And keep in mind, the time to beat is 20 minutes and 30 seconds. All right, I don't know if you can bloody hear me, but I got 18.25. It's really windy, it's really hot. That's like 110% improvement. My pedal fell off halfway up. I lost a bit of power there. Range Rover. Big improvement just with holding a drink bottle and swapping hands every 30 seconds. But yeah, cycling sucks. <laughs> My stuff's still here. <laughs> All right, back to the future again. Hey guys, this is future, future Connor here. The one that's actually editing this video. So here's what's interesting. I did a third time trial last night because it was 35 degrees again and I got 19 minutes and four seconds without Palmer cooling. So it seems that Palmer cooling is actually five to 10% faster in a 20 minute-ish time trial. And that is legitimate science there. So peer review that. Nice one, mate. So there you go, instantly faster. So here's how you can use this in your training. I would use ice packs between repetitions of your harder workouts that you can hold or put on your head to maintain the cooling of your core. And what you might start to see is that this general rise in heart rate throughout a workout might actually be offset a little bit by the Palmer cooling, which means that you can maybe even negative split or even split your workouts and not completely diet in. Pretty epic, right? And no, you don't have to go in the ice bath between your reps. That makes no sense and it will definitely not work. But there are a couple of products that you can hold in your hand or even wear a vest that has little ice packs in it. But home DIY stuff is the way to go and it's probably gonna be just as beneficial. And combining this with a great, well-structured warm-up, this is gonna be a guaranteed PB. But there is one last thing that I haven't talked about yet that can boost your race performance and give you that edge on race day. And it's all up here between your ears. We have all felt this, 2.5 kilometers into a 5K. It's starting to get hard and you aren't sure if you can hold on to this pace any longer and the thoughts are starting to creep in. This is so hard. I'm not gonna be able to break the parkrun world record today. If I just keep running straight at the first turn point, no one would even notice. I could go home. Absolute struggle town. And then the fourth kilometer comes and you think, I can just slow down a little. I've banked some time, even though you actually haven't. And then somehow your fifth kilometer is your fastest. How does that make sense? This can't be just me. And this happened in my first attempt to go sub 18 minutes for the 5K, where I ran ever so close, but literally missed out by only a couple of seconds. My mentality just let me down. As embarrassed as I was, I set out to avenge myself two weeks later. And the result was quite shocking after I fixed my damn mindset. More on that in a second. Now, mindset is one of the most important factors in running performance. I recently watched a video on the Sweat Elite channel which I'll link in the description, interviewing the legend, Renato Canova. He explained that most of the best athletes in the world do the same workouts, live the same, sleep the same, but on race day, some athletes just have it and some don't. And what I got from these comments is that the mental aspect can be a trained element in your preparation for a race. And you should be building up this mental toughness just like you build up your aerobic base and your running shoe collection. Another example of insane mental strength and also mental progression is Eliab Kichoge between the 159 project 
project and when he actually ran sub two in the marathon. As he put in his own words, all the training was the same, the living was the same, the eating was the same, drinking the same, lots of tea, just like before. The only thing that was different was the confidence that he had after the 159 INEOS project. He knew that he could do it. Another guy that absolutely crushes it on the mental game is Christian Blumenfeld at the 2001 Tokyo Olympics in the triathlon. Look at the absolute defeat in the faces of Yi and Wilder in this video, compared to the absolute full send mentality of Christian Blumenfeld's face. Pure grit, I absolutely love this Norwegian guy. He was vomiting all over the floor after he crossed the line. What an animal. The mind is more powerful than you think, but only if you train it. And me working on my head game for two weeks not only scraped me under that 18 minute barrier, but I absolutely smashed it by 15 seconds. And I know it's not as epic as winning a gold medal at the Olympics or running sub two. It still psyched me up to keep training really hard. So here's what I did next. Just like Elliot in his second attempt at sub two, his confidence was much higher because he had that self belief from the workouts that he'd done and the races that he'd done previously. So we need to prove our goal race to ourselves in training but how are we gonna do that? For a 5K race, for example, I would do six Ks worth of volume at goal race pace or slightly faster to get yourself confident that you can hit just that five kilometer volume in one race. And you can do this over any race distance. It doesn't necessarily have to be 5Ks, but here are a couple of workouts, for example, in a 5K block that you could do to build that confidence and get yourself mentally ready. 14 to 16 times 400 at goal race pace with a one minute break, super easy. Number two, workout number two is six times 1K, oh geez, at goal race pace, GRP, with a 90 second break. Decent handwriting, eh? So one of these two will get your confidence up for race day, but you're gonna need a race day strategy. Now my favorite race day strategy is chunking, and yes, it sounds kind of gross, but it's really, really important. Chunking is when you set a particular goal for certain sections of your race so that you only have to focus on that particular chunk at a time rather than stressing out about saving energy for the end and stupid stuff like that. For example, in my 5K race, my first two kilometers was my warm-up chunk. And the goal of this warm-up chunk was to get myself to the three kilometer mark as economically and relaxed as possible. And then the next chunk that I had in my head was kilometer three and kilometer four. This was my race block. This is where I'm actually racing myself and under no circumstances was I gonna drop off race pace. That was my only goal in that section. And I kept telling myself, this is the race right here. These two kilometers are the race. And then my last block was my Christian Blumenfeld full send block where I just give it everything that I have. This block doesn't really need much explanation. Now you can do this kind of chunking in any distance race and customize it to when you usually start to let those voices in your head start to control you. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to run fast, you're gonna to have to click on this next video. So I'll see you over there. Peace.